everyone, and welcome to the uh, symposium today, sponsored by FX Street. Um, always a pleasure doing these. Uh, today we're going to talk about entries, and we're going to focus a lot on um, buy and sell zone that we like to discuss on the technology, but also we're going to talk a lot about um, where price typically turns. I think there's a lot of speculation as to why price turns um, at certain price points, and, and a lot of people have different interpretations of why it does, but it's it's and I've essentially attempted to boil it down. Hey, Albert, thanks for coming today. Um, boil it down to to kind of like a maths problem where you get a bunch of data, which is the data of whatever it is that you're trading. You kind of uh, try and synthesize it in a way that you can see it visually. And when you can see it visually, well, then you're able to make uh, sensible uh, trading decisions. And so what I like to do, and if you go look, back at uh, maybe some of my presentations from maybe maybe two two or three years ago we spoke a lot about uh, currency strength back then and uh, the reason I like currency strength is because it's showing something called a market cycle um, you'll see big pushes in a currency for example the euro is bought during one session uh, and that buying can obviously not continue forever so at some stage um, the buying of the euro will stop and the strength of the euro will start to uh, to slack off a bit. Hey, hey Craig. Um, and so I just really like to see it in a visual way. And so if we just have a look very quickly at currency strength here, um, it looks pretty confusing. But you can see that, I mean, if you look at this, <clears throat> I mean, there are none of these colored lines are going up and going on forever. None of them are going down and going on forever. They're normally going up they're going down and they're going up and they're going down and like absolutely everything in nature I mean everything is cyclical um, weather patterns uh, bird migration um, pandemics um, everything weather uh, and the markets uh, are the same way so here we have this red line here is the British pound you can see the British pound came from very negative territory down here and then it went up to very positive territory and then it came back down to eventually to to very negative territory. As a matter of fact, at this price point here, at this uh, point in time, it was the cheapest, uh, rather the weakest currency. So it went from being the most, uh, the currency that was most in demand, the strongest, to the weakest currency. Okay, and so it's really nice. Or rather, wouldn't it be nice if you could time the cycles of currencies with uh, the distribution of liquidity uh, on a price chart? Hey, Charles, thanks for coming today. Um, and this is just something that I really like to get really nerdy about. And so here, if we zoom out a lot, have a look at all of this data, you can see here that here we had the Australian dollar that was really strong, but just before that it was really weak. And we had we had the Australian dollar that was very strong here, it was the strongest, but just before that it was really weak. Okay, and so what i what I try to do is I try to find these extremes in currency strength. And I use it as an opportunity to position myself uh, as a contrarian trader. So when I see the Japanese yen, which this is up here, and it's very, very strong, I know that if this push in the Japanese yen is happening at a price-sensitive point in the market, well, then I know it's time to begin to sell the Japanese yen. The same as the British pound down here. It was very, very weak. Is this weakness going to continue forever? Absolutely not. And as a matter of fact, the British pound went from being the weakest to the strongest. The Japanese yen went from being the strongest to the weakest. And here we have the same with the Australian dollar that was very weak. Now it's very strong. Okay. The Swiss franc, very strong, very weak. And so this happens, this happens all the time. And the good thing about this is if something is happening all the time, then you can start to predict what's going to happen next when certain things start to happen. So when you have a, an extreme push in currency strength, well, then you know that that is going to, at some stage, uh, stop or slow down. And if we, I'm just going to go to, this is the pound American dollar. We'll just stay on this chart, I think. It's going to be easy to have to these windows because they're in the way. So if we look at this, for example, we can see here that well, currently you, we have the Australian dollar that is getting very strong. And we have the Japanese yen that is getting very weak. So if I just zoom in a little just to make that clear, the orange line is the Australian dollar and the purple line is the Japanese 
Japanese yen. Notice here that the Japanese yen was very strong a day or so ago. And so now it's time for the Japanese yen to take a breather and start to move lower. And here we had, we had a very weak Australian dollar. It was the weakest. Now it's starting to move higher. So let's have a look at the Australian dollar, Japanese yen, uh, with this information in mind. So I'm just going to drag that on there. Okay. So we'll go back to the currency strength. So now it's getting very strong. The Japanese yen is getting very weak. So this currency pair should be moving higher. Okay. So what we want to do in a situation like this is we want to find a reason to begin to sell this currency pair because we know that we are reaching the end of a bullish cycle, a bull cycle on this time frame for this currency pair. Okay, okay. And so what we do is we go to um, the price chart. This is the four hour chart. We start to look for areas of supply um, at which to sell. You can see here, if we, if we study this for just one moment, um, we price rallied up, we formed this top, and then we started to come down. And the, always, the only reason price managed to come down from here was because there was a lot of selling going on there. The price came all the way down here and the price stopped here. Okay? And the only reason price was able to move away from here is because of the, there was a shift in flows and people started to move out of Japanese yen move into Australian dollars. Only crash. These look, these look pretty good shot. Japanese, Japanese yen, this very high point, we had a huge um, divergence in currency strength. Basically, we had a very strong Australian dollar. We had a very weak Japanese yen. Um, okay, and what happens when this happens? Well, price normally starts to move back in. And so, focusing on bleeding edge price, looking at four hour data, uh, price is reaching a very we have a very strong Australian dollar, a very weak Japanese yen. We're starting to approach some historically um, price sensitive areas. And so if we look at this one here, we have, we have this one just here. And this is interesting because when price was here last time, we managed to move below an area of micro demand. And you can't see it on this time frame, um, which is why I refer to it as micro demand. And, and I know there's demand here because last time price came to this price point, we left, we moved higher. We tested it once, we tested it twice, moved away, we started to distribute liquidity, so the sell side is buying, the buy side was selling, uh, and price moved through this little pool of liquidity, and I mean, essentially consumed this. So we know there is strength from this price point and higher. There is an interest to sell from this price point and higher. We can remove this, then you ask yourself the question, what area of supply remove the demand. Well, it's this one just here. Okay, and price tested it once, so a bit, tested it once, a little bit deeper twice, and now we're starting to form these lower highs. So when you have an area like this that is formed, each test, I'll remove this rectangle now, each test defines where the beginning of the sell zone uh, is located. So we have this area of supply, price tested here the first time, so when this happens, I mean the, the chart is telling you that this is the cheapest price that you want to sell at. So you mark this off in your charts relative to the area of supply, and you wait for price to come back to it in the future. Price came to it. What happened? Price went a little bit deeper. And this is expected behavior. Um, each time price comes to a, an area of supply or demand, um, it pokes into it consumes a little bit of liquidity that's available at that price point. When that happens, the next time price comes to it, it has to go a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, and a little bit deeper. And I often refer to this as pancakes. So you have, uh, you'll have a plate of pancakes on a table. Um, you have, let's say, 10 hungry uh, people sitting around the table. If I'm the first guy to take a pancake, I'll take my fork, I'll put it in the plate. My fork will take the first pancake, so I take the first pancake to myself. But if the guy sitting next to me, Nicholas, wants a pancake, well, he has to take his fork and he has to put his fork a little bit deeper in the plate to get the next pancake. When Nicholas has his pancake, well, then Maris wants his pancake, so he has to go a little bit deeper in the stack. And eventually there will be no pancakes left on the plate, and so Price will have to look for a new plate of pancakes, metaphorically speaking, of course. 
so price has to travel higher. And so here was the first pancake. That was my pancake. Here was Nicholas's pancake. And Marius didn't get a pancake because price didn't get up that high. So price simply the, the shift in flows occurred at the second pancake, which is essentially this uh, cell zone identified just here. When price left here. We came down. We started forming these lows. We had a very gradual push higher, trying to identify or 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 revisit these micro cell zones. We have one just here, and then price left. When this happens, well, then we know that there's a shift. A shift has taken place because now we are seeing mark, the structure of the market begin to fail. We're starting to see areas of demand uh, form. Uh, sorry, areas of supply form above price. So this is the origin this move. The price left here, we managed to move below these lows, so this is the one that we'll reference in the future. We have this little micro area just here, price tested it, and it moved through it. Okay, and so we didn't even have to go that deep into this, um, this little pool of liquidity, plate of pancakes, um, uh, for in order for price to start to move lower. But now, knowing what we know, we know that the shift has already started to take place. We know that the Australian dollar is, is strong, it's quite strong relative to the uh, Japanese yen, as you can see here, it's strong and getting stronger. The yen is weak and getting weaker. And we want to try and find an area to sell at. So if we go now to the smaller time frame, we'll start on the on the hourly, and we'll have a look. You want to see proof the price, rather, you want to see proof that the flows, the shift in flows has started to take place. We had this little area that was marked off here, um, which is the one that we could see very clearly on the four hour chart. Price poked into it, and now we had a very strong push away. So this is very good. This is telling us that uh, that the buyers are overwhelmed by the sellers, and so the liquidity has changed hands. And now we are sitting, starting to see flows move into the Japanese yen and out of the Australian dollar. Okay. Um, so now we we need to start to look for a sell zone, um, like we like we just did on the four-hour chart, where this was a sell zone initially. This was a sell zone. After that, okay, so you want to start to look. Um, so essentially, we are looking for these cell zones to occur. So we have to go to a smaller time frame, I think, to find those. If you look here, we had this price point, we had this area of supply price left. We sat on top of this hourly demand. This half an hour supply removed it. We had a pullback and we left. When this pullback occurs, this tells us where the edge of the cell zone is. So the sell zone, um, when price comes back, it, starts, it points to the edge of the area. Okay, so when price does that and then leaves uh, past the next low, this is where you look to sell in the future. Price came to it a little bit deeper. Notice here, because price already uh, revisited this one here, we want to start to look higher. And we have a micro sell zone just here, so you continue to move this higher. This is where price came to. We went down. What does that mean? That means that the sell zone has moved higher because price had a deeper push. So this is the this is the um, the price point that we reference uh, in the future. So this is the area of supply. This is where we have uh, the current sell zone. So anywhere between here and here will be an attractive price to sell uh, this asset on this time frame. And we have this area of supply just above the price. Um, so this is the this is the origin. Actually, up here is the origin of this entire move. So you want to look for the deepest um, pullback. And if you look at something like this, if you look at this, is this um, does this represent clarity, or does it represent chaos? And I say clarity and chaos because this buy here represents uh, clarity because it's very clear what's going on. This is selling. But if you look above price, this is this is a uh, it's a little bit chaotic. There's a lot of price movement going up and going down painting different colored candles. So essentially what you need to do is you need to identify the origin of this move, you want to identify the chaos, and you want to mark off where the chaos stops above the price. And it stops just here at the 7492 area. Because this is below um, uh, sorry, it's above all of this kind of sideways price movement. So price went up, we came down, we went we opened the new bar, the slingshot was pulled back and we left. So this would be an interesting price to start to sell uh, this asset at. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just telling you, um, technically speaking, this is what we want to look for in the price chart. 
we also have a very clear imbalance in, uh, in the flows at this price point here. This is a very attractive price. Um, a lot of transactions occurred at this price point. Um, and I'm saying this because we have very strong pushes away from price. Okay, so we have just this very clear uh, price nodule um, just above where price currently is. And this is happening at the point where we have the, uh, the Australian dollar. This is on a different time frame now. I have to go to the four hour. Where we have a very strong increase in the currency strength of the Australian dollar relative to the Japanese yen. So we can expect this to start to break down. Um, <clears throat> if we have a look at something else that's very important, that is where these uh, where these major turning points occur. Before I ramble on, so to make sure there's no questions. So we have major turning points are really important because they're telling us where we have um, like a, like a sudden influx or or a, or a shift in liquidity. Where we had price that came from this bottom, this low, and it went up. It came from this high, and gradually. Down. We went up to this high and we went down. We went up to this high and we went down. These price points, these turning pro, um, points in price, where price moves up to an area and then retreats, and that's telling us very clearly that we had an interest to sell at this price point here. Essentially, we want to try and identify where this shift um, in, in, um, uh, in the movement of liquidity is occurring. And if we look at this just here, this is this is a, a simply just currency strength indicator and I'm subtracting one currency from the other and it gives me with like like a like a rest like a remainder and the remainder I, I did this plot in the form of a histogram you can see that we have a very high reading here so last time we reached such high readings was down here prior it came down to here and it went up so we started to reach these very high readings historically here at price point where price was poking into, in this case, a four-hour area of supply. So with a high probability, we can expect the price is going to move into this area here and it's going to start to move away. Again, if we take this line and project it back historically, price was up at this price point here. If we mark off that line, just like that, it happened right here. It's going to move it one candle to the left. So on this red candle just here, um, we were told, rather we were, we would be confident in the assumption that the Australian dollar is strong relative to the Japanese yen, so we could expect that the two would turn around or take a breather long enough for us to, uh, for us to have a trade. Price went up and then started to move down. And then you can see here the price slowly started to break down. Okay, and so essentially, in a really good way, which is what I've been talking about now for the past 20 minutes, um, to identify uh, turning points in market cycles is to use currency strength. And, uh, I just find this to be a very powerful uh, tool to help visualize this. Uh, if we do one more example, let's, let's have a look here. Let's zoom out a little bit. And let's go to the daily chart. I have enough data. That is the demo account. I don't have a lot of data. Okay, let's go to the 15 minute chart. I have data. On. Okay, here. So you can see here that we have the, the euro relative to the, to the kiwi. Um, we have a very extreme reading for that currency pair. So if we go to the euro kiwi, we go to the 30 minute chart, we should be reaching a price point where we could expect price to potentially move that. And notice that we have price that is very, very high. Where is this occurring? So it's occurring at supply. Okay, we have the beginning of the size of the sell zone is exactly where price is right now. The area of supply is here, right there. And this is happening at a point where price, sorry, not price, where the strength the difference in strength between the euro and the, uh, the New Zealand dollar is so extreme that we can expect that it's going to have a breather 
within the not so distant future. The last time you were up here, price turned around. Okay. We had we had this one here and nothing happened. That happens as well, they're not all gonna work. And we had this one here where we had a decrease in price but an increase in strength of the euro relative to the Kiwi. This is a telltale sign that the direction of this currency pair is likely going to change. Because if you focus on um, currency strength and what it's actually telling you, it's telling you we are calculating a, an index for the euro. So we want to see the, rel the strength of the euro relative to all other currencies. And we want to compare that with the strength of the Kiwi relative to all other currencies. And you can see that the strength between these two currencies is changing. At a, point, at a point when price is getting very, very low. When this happens, price slowly starts to turn around as we're experiencing now. Now we have the same thing happening where we have an incredible uh, weak uh, Kiwi, we have a relatively strong Euro, and this is happening at an area of supply, a very clear area of supply, the 174, 50-ish area. Uh, this is on the half an hour chart, so we could probably expect that it was some kind of reaction up here. Excuse me, just had a cough there. Okay, we've been going for 23 minutes. I just want to know if there's, if anyone has any questions. Hey, Jamie. Yes, please. Please ask me a question. While you're uh, typing your question, I just add a comment to this. And my comment is, uh, of course, when you, when you consider how you want to qualify areas of supply and demand, you need to identify areas of supply and demand that were strong enough to consume an opposing area of supply and demand. And the reason this is important is because in the retail FX space, if I use broker A and I make assumptions based on that broker's volume reading and all of the traders that broker A um, has as customers are losers, um, that I could be making some pretty poor assumptions based on that data. So there are, there are no clear volume readings in the retail FX space unless you're using a very large broker uh, with a lot of data. So it very, makes it very difficult to use this kind of information to qualify areas of supply and demand. What we can do is we can look at what an area of supply or demand was able to accomplish um, historically. And here, we had, we had a low point here, price tested it, and then this is the area of supply directly above this area of demand that was strong enough to have price move this area. So what you do then is you mark off the high. This is the beginning of the sell zone, the top of the boxes this area of supply. So I can remove this one. Now we can see here we have supply, here we have the sell zone. Price is currently at the sell zone. So price is going to probably poke up, come down, poke up, come down. And notice also that we are, we are starting to paint white candles, which is just telling us that we have candles that aren't really going anywhere. Price is going up and it's going down, it's going up and going down. And when this happens, typically there is uh, it's kind of the pattern of orders being filled. So liquidity being distributed. Okay, so uh, Jamie is asking, what is your signal to enter a trade um, when the price when the price goes to this to the area of supply and demand? What is your key aspects to open a trade, and what time frame do you look at the trade? Okay, uh, good question. Um, I mean, I'm, I rarely find myself number one on the small time frames because because I find the intraday volatility. Uh, to be quite brutal and so I normally look at big time frames like the weekly focus on the major flows uh, there um, but it doesn't mean that you can't trade on the small time frames it just means that you have to be um, a lot more active where you have to be in front of the computer so that you can uh, make uh, trading decisions and you can act when something is telling you to do uh, something specific um, and so for a situation like that I mean I would be I would look at this area I would put in a limit order to sell at this price point here. And I would do that for as long as I'm confident that 
this area is the one price will turn at. Okay, and so this is essentially what I would do. Um, so I'd normally look at a, I'd have a look at a few different time frames just so I can get an idea of what's going on. And also, it's quite easy to overlook information, very important information when you're stuck on one time frame. So what I like to see is I like to see what I refer to as a kind of a flip zone, which is where we have, which is essentially supply, sorry, support and resistance, where we had this area of demand. Price moved higher, we established a buy zone. This area of supply occurred just above um, this buy zone, just above this area of demand. So I would be pretty comfortable selling here. Okay, and the buy zone, sorry, the sell zone, apologies, would be just here. And the reason I like this one better is because when we had this one here, this one was formed, price went down, but then we came back pretty quickly. Okay, and so there's no real black space between this departure and current price because price has already revisited this area here. So I'd be a little bit uncomfortable with that one, and I would focus on the one just above. Um, and I wouldn't have known that if I would have stayed on the 30-minute chart. For example, I would have been potentially oblivious to the fact that we had something going on here. You can actually see it quite clearly here. I suppose we had this area of demand. Um, this is demand because it was able to consume opposing supply, which is just here. Uh, price tested, formed the buy zone. We sat on that and then we left. So this would probably be um, the price where we can expect um, price to have a bit of bounce. Does that make sense, Jamie? Super. Very good. Do we have any other questions? I mean, currency strength, uh, for those of you who are interested in currency strength uh, software, I mean, there are loads of uh, free ones um, all over. I think. Yeah, just, just have a look on Google and see if you can find one. There are a lot of different ones that are free. This is one I've just written, written myself and I like to use it. But there are loads of free ones available out there. You don't have to spend money on them. Yeah, so this is, um, this is, this is a pretty interesting trade um, for the reasons we spoke about. And this right here is really important. You can see that we are actually we are so positive here. We have such weakness in uh, the Kiwi that, that we can expect it to at some point in the near future to begin to turn around. Okay, but again, I mean, everything is relative to the time frame that you're looking at. So we're looking at the 30 minute chart, but what about the, what about the daily? What's going on in the daily chart? Maybe the, maybe the histogram is negative, which it is. So that's telling us a different story entirely. And the story it's telling us here is that actually we are reaching the end, or coming close to the end of the bear cycle and we are potentially onboarding uh, longs. Okay, how does that change your perspective? How does that change your confidence on that 30-minute trade? Uh, quite a lot, doesn't it? It would at least make me think, hmm, maybe I don't want to get involved in that trade because I can see on the daily chart, which is which has much more major flows on it, um, you can see that people are starting to to accumulate long positions. So I would actually have less less confidence selling at this area here. That I would buy in this leg here or somewhere a little bit below price. And so it's so important that you're mindful of what's going on on, on multiple time frames. And this is why this uh, the multiple time frame analysis is pretty important. Um, we can also have a look on maybe weekly. I don't know if I have enough data. And you can see here that we've actually just ended bull cycle. Now we're starting to retreat. And again, this now on the <laughs> on the weekly chart confirms that we could be selling. We actually have like a nice little pattern here where we have we have the top of the area of distribution is here. We can go like that, which lines up pretty nicely to where that area of 50 minute uh, supply was. Okay. So very interesting, but also notice that we are indeed reacting to something in here, maybe the top, so we have like this um, resistance becomes support scenario going on in the weekly chart, which is pretty huge. So again, I'm quite careful about selling uh, anytime soon because 
because of this and because of what we're seeing here in the daily chart. But it doesn't mean it doesn't work, it just means that you have to manage the trade more aggressively when you run your 15 minute chart. Have any more questions? Is there anything that, uh, that you guys want me to have a look at? I can just grab a random symbol. You can have a look at Australian dollar, American dollar. You can see where we are. Currently reacting at weekly supply. No, we're not. This is the 30 minute chart. For the weekly chart, we are reacting at here yeah, weekly supply. So we have we have this area of supply that is formed. Price tested it, which is good, it's telling us that we have a sell zone right here. You see the high of this, so I can zoom in a little bit. The high of this candle, this is the cheapest price that we want to sell for. So this becomes our reference point for the future. Price comes up to it, go a little bit deeper, and then we start to retreat. Now we're starting to paint white candles um, below this area of weekly supply. When I see white candles being formed just below an area of supply, well, that makes me a little bit nervous about selling because it makes me feel as if we have maybe an accumulation beginning to happen. Again, it depends on where this is occurring. We just ended bear cycle. You can see we had a huge push lower. Now price is starting to retreat higher. So this is where you might want to be a little bit careful. So selling up here, you just have to be aware of what's going on. So again, the bigger time frames play an enormous role. You see here that we're also starting to react to this. We had this area of demand was tested once, twice, three times. Price sat on it. I finally went through it, and the origin of the move that pretty much removed this is somewhere up in here, which is probably roughly the highs of this green candle and this red candle here. Okay, so this is pretty close to where price is uh, having a bit of a trouble through. Okay. Any questions? Everyone's pretty quiet today. We've been going on for about 35 minutes. Take up anyone's time when necessary. And if there's if there's a topic that you want me to cover uh, during uh, the next uh, symposium at FX Street, um, send me an email and I can prepare something. And I'm just going to put it in here. You can send me an email to that address. Or if you have any questions about um, about anything, uh, let me know. I'll be thrilled. I'm really good at getting back to any everyone who screams who writes to me. So if you write to me, I normally get back to you within, uh, within a couple of hours. This I'm in bed. Anything trading uh, makes me smile. So I'm thrilled to get back. And if there's something you want me to prepare for next time, something very specific, if you want to go down a rabbit hole about liquidity distribution or currency strength or algo trading or whatever, uh, shoot me an email, and um, uh, and I can inform Vicky, and then we can have a, a session specifically on that topic. We can have a half an hour, an hour session on that. That'd be very exciting. Good. It's such a pleasure. Thanks so much, Albert, and Thomas, and Jamie. Thanks for your question, Jamie. Okay, Vicky, what do you reckon? If, if no one has any more questions, I think we can uh, wrap things up for today. The sun is shining here in Copenhagen. Um, normally it's pretty chilly and moist, but today the sun is shining. It's still chilly, but it's uh, <laughs> it's nice. Yes, good. Okay, let's have a look at the Kiwi Swiss franc. Kiwi Swiss franc. <clears throat> okay, so looking on this time frame, we ended a bear cycle here, reached this area of daily supply, price retreated, now we're starting, now we're kind of sideways, but notice as well that we are, we reached these very high uh, levels for these two currencies. So the difference between the two currencies is very big. So we had a very strong Kiwi and a very weak Swiss franc, and now price 
treat it, and then we move sideways. So now we're kind of stuck in a range for the time being. Let's have a look on the monthly just to see where we are. Um, you can also see here the price is, we had something in here. Okay, price pretty, got close to testing it, close to testing it, we sat on it, we went up, and we went down, and our price is coming back. So you might want to ask yourself the question, what area of supply removed this demand? There's something in here which we can't see. But like that, we clean, have a look and see if there's some clarity. You can see it right there, this is the one. This is the area of supply that did it. Okay, so this is where price went to roughly, a little bit deeper, and now it's kind of having a bit of a retreat. But notice also below price that we had this area of supply, this is weekly supply, which is major, that's major, major flows. It's gone. It was tested once, twice, three times, four times, and price cut through it. I mean, this is a hot knife through butter. That's a, that's a huge, uh, that's shirt tearing strength. And it originated from this little area right here for price. So let's have a look at that on the smaller time frame on the daily. Let's see if there's something there that's worth looking at. Let's see, you can see it here again, just here. Tested a bunch. Tested, tested, tested. Price went up, slingshot was pulled back, and then we left. So when you see a pattern like that, the low of the deepest retracement prior to the price moving through that is here. So we have something in here. Sorry, I had a cough there. And the whole push that responsible for moving this occurred from, from the low. over here. So the slingshot was pulled back to here. So at about the uh, 0 0.5934, we're probably going to see some price sensitive areas. And I would, this is messy on this time frame. Again, here we have chaos. If you want to find the clarity, um, um, and that's going to be below somewhere in here. You want to see a very clear point. Let's go, go to the hourly and have a look. Let's go back and look. You can see yeah, this is a real mess. So on this time frame, one hour, you can see that there's much more clarity. And here, here we have a nice strong cutaway. So this would be a much better price to get involved in. Okay, and you can see that we had some micro supply in here. Moved. <clears throat> tested, tested. The, the move that moved through this originated from here. We went higher, and so I think that roughly somewhere in here. <clears throat> you might want to have a look on a smaller time frame for clarity, but it originates from here. So this is a very nice uh, price point. We also have a little one here, which is very beautiful. And we have a couple of other ones here. We have this one down here, which was tested. It was removed from here, kind of a couple levels there next to each other, top of each other. So we have a couple of areas there that we could uh, have a look at. Go back to the four hour chart above price. We have this. This is a, a bit of a bump in the road because this is kind of a turning point. So this is essentially uh, a buy zone. This area just here, actually this one here, which I like. Okay, so price tested it. So you could certainly uh, entertain shorter term uh, sell here, but you, you have obstacles in the road almost immediately. So that's why I wouldn't to look to sell here. I'd want to look above all of this mess. So I'd be selling up here somewhere <clears throat> and I'd be buying below this low here or at some of these levels that we, we highlighted just down here. Good. Okay, we've gone 40 minutes. So what do you reckon, Vicky? Should we wrap it up for today? Yeah, my pleasure, Jamie. But again, if you guys have questions, please um, uh, send me an email. I get back to you. I normally respond within a couple of hours, as I mentioned. So I'm thrilled to receive any messages from you guys. Anyone have any final questions before we wrap up? Okay, good. Finish up. 
Well, thanks everyone for, for coming today. Thank you so much, FX3, for having me on. I absolutely love doing this. We've been doing these for, uh, for quite a few years. There's, uh, there are lots and lots of uh, videos in the repository that you can have a look at. Um, there's a lot of, there's a very interesting uh, discussion a few years ago about algo trading and currency strength. So I highly recommend that one. So you can have a dig in the, in the archives and have a look. But, uh, but uh, thanks everyone for, for being here today. And, uh, and I'll catch you all next time.